Usually when I hear I'm going to talk to somebody and they've written a book, I get this feeling of apprehension, which is, oh, man, I got to read the book. And they booked you and I'm very excited. And then I hear um, Stephen wrote a novel and I'm immediately very intrigued. So I get sent this copy of Harold, which is this novel you wrote, and it's beautiful. It's really funny and touching. It's beautifully written. I think only you could write this. And I, I love it. I just, I really do. And it was such a nice thing for me to read the book and then know I get to go and drive in and talk to, tell Stephen, you got here a little early and I heard you were hanging out outside like a creep. But I, <laughs> I was so excited. I, want, I had the book and I oh. wanted to go down and tell you, I need to tell you how much I like your book. I really appreciate it. And that. it's funny because you mentioned Vonnegut and I'm like, I can feel like there's a, there's different strains. Like you say, there's a soup, but there's, I can see like Joseph Heller and Vonnegut. There's a, but it's very sweet and also at times sad. And there's such funny stuff in here. And it's all from the mind of an eight year old, seven or eight. Seven. Yeah. I didn't read it that thoroughly. Um, <laughs> I just skimmed skim to get it. I just skimmed to get his age. I'm very good at it. I'm pretty, you know, that's the one thing I will read is the age. No, but I was, <laughs> I think eight would have been the better choice, but that's my stew brain versus your consomme brain. I didn't know my broth brain. But you know, first of all, one of the first things that, that struck me because I'm so obsessed with myself is I read this, Jesus. I read this thing at the front by uh, by the uh, the editor of the book from Simon and Schuster, who's clearly a big deal editor, and he's talking about how he stumbled upon you doing a set on my show, an interview on my show. Oh yes, and he talks yes, about yes. how this is why it all comes together. He talks about how he's always been a fan of yours, and then he said uh, he says here at the top of the book, um, he's starting to think about you know, what could I do with Stephen Wright? And then he said, I had only started my job, um, I guess it's Simon and Schuster, and I was spending a lot of time searching the internet, trying to come up with book ideas. I can't remember what weird YouTube algorithm led me to it, but I came across a clip of Stephen Wright on Conan O'Brien's late night show back in 2013, when he talked about writing a novel on Twitter, posting one sentence at a time. How long is the novel by now, Conan asked. 1,500 pages, Wright said. 1,500 pages, Conan said. And then you say, if there's one word on each page. <laughs> <laughs> and then I guess he thought, I gotta check this out. So he went on Twitter and you really were doing that. And then he starts talking to you and you guys form a friendship and you do this book. So I was just thrilled that- uh, That's amazing, the, the connection. Yeah, yeah. It's tremendous. Yeah, you would also think there might be a, <laughs> a little financial sharing in here. But we'll talk about that later. You'll hear. No, I him. love that. I love that he but I, saw but I, that But clip. I love the serendipity of you do this joke, this guy sees that, then you start talking, then uh, this book comes along. And um, this book is really special because it's a, it's a boy and he's growing up in, you say the mid sixties and he's in a classroom and he's daydreaming and thinking, uh, you know, throughout the class, and his mind is taking him all around the universe. He talks about hanging out with his grandfather, and in there are v great, I don't wanna call them jokes, but really good, profound observations, and they're all very much the way a kid would think. And you have this idea about, what if people were like trees, and that they just kept getting taller as they got older? And I'd be walking down the street as an eight year, seven year old boy and I'd see a, an 80 year old woman and she's 45 feet tall. <laughs> and, <laughs> and you have this conversation with her and I'm and just tickled. And then there's so many sweet things that happen in it. And it's very, it's almost also has some sort of a James Joyce quality because it's all happening in a very constrained period of time. But also the time is infinite because if you're daydreaming, a billion no things boundaries. can happen in 45 minutes. Yeah, he's in the class and he's 
thinking, he's daydreaming, he's thinking about dreams he's had, he's thinking about experiences that he really, he's thinking of memories, and it all is in one day. And in, in, uh, in the class, I, 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 it's great that you, you like it so much. I love it. How much of it is you, or do you not want to oh, say? A lot, a lot of it, a lot of, a lot of it. I think you can't write anything be completely made up. You know, all my, see, the thing is, when I, I wrote, was writing it on Twitter, I wrote like a half a page on there. Then I stopped and then I didn't write it for like a year. And then I thought that thing, I should keep writing it and just keep going. But I didn't put it on Twitter. So I just kept going. And, you know, the jokes I do are like, creatively, it's like going through a narrow window, mm -hmm. a couple sentences, two, three sentences, and hopefully the audience laughs, you know, da -na 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 Okay, and I'm not complaining, I'm just describing it. But I had a lot of things in my mind that w wouldn't go through that window. To, to just be yeah, a two-couple-liner yeah. joke. So I essentially used Harold's head. It's like I put a funnel on his head. And I poured into that funnel everything I think about being alive. Yeah. You know, religion and war and authority and the universe and... Is there a God? And, you know, that's all the way that's through That's repeated there. all the way through the book. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is God willing if there's a God? You know, or I hope God, if there's a God. So you're constantly questioning that throughout. Yeah, it was a great, I didn't even know I had all this in my head, but it was a whole other way to create. It wasn't jokes. And uh, I liked writing it. It wasn't a burden. I never got like, oh, when is it going to be done? Oh, no one was waiting for it. I had no book or deal or anything. Again, it was like playing. Like when yeah, you were joking, yeah. you were joking with the thing outside and they said, oh, we should use that as a bit. So I would just try to write a little bit of it every day. And then coffee, I have to thank coffee because my mind goes insane on coffee. <laughs> and I would just time, would drink the coffee. I had like a two hour window where I would just and I, it became a little world that I would go to. And uh, You're also, I tried not to think about how is this going to be received? What are they going to think? Right. I was just like playing. Oh, oh, oh. The comedy I've always loved the most is when the person providing it doesn't need to please me. When I first started writing it, I realized there was no story. And then I thought, I can't keep this there's no story and then I thought I I don't know how. so I stopped for a year I thought I don't know how to write a story I don't know how yeah. and then I thought a year later I thought so what just I want to just write it anyway right. so so right. it's not like this happened and then this happened and then he did and then because of that yeah. so I just accepted that I didn't know how to write a story so I just that's just went. Like, the other thing I love is Harold's voice, very much like your voice, but imagine you as a kid, but <laughs> there's a great thing where his teacher is prominent because she's running the class the whole time. Harold is thinking all these incredible things and having these journeys in his mind. And every now and at one point she, uh, he remembers a time that she came up and looked at what he was drawing and what Harold was drawing and said, that's really beautifully done. You did a really good job here, Harold. And he said, how dare you judge me? Because <laughs> <laughs> even flattery is a judgment. It's a judgment. It's a yes, judgment. It, it, and it's, um, it's just packed with those things. So uh, I hope you write more, but if all you wrote was this, that is plenty because it is fantastic. It's really good. Thank you so much. And I... You know, it's it, you're such a great, uh, inspirational and fascinating person to talk to and laugh with. That I hope you come back. I like love you're one to, of those. I would per, love to. You're one of those would, people who needs to come back. I would love it. And I'll have more. We can have more competing analogies. More you know? soup analogies. Broth. Or we can maybe change it to. <laughs> no, I would you know, love our it. Our brains are I... like you know crackers, and yours is a very <laughs> a dry Dutch cracker that's. <laughs> Got a high seed count. It's very good for your your bowels. And I'm, but I'm like this rich, savory, buttery cracker. I noticed that all yours are always. Oh, better. they're good. <laughs> better, mine, better than mine. <laughs> oh yeah, I see a pattern. Yeah, there's a I pattern see, here. Yes, it, yeah, but yeah, I think you are one of the fastest, incredible comedy minds ever. Mm. That's what I would say to people. When I, what is it like going on there? I said, hey, you know what? I say something. I think, hope it's funny. If, if, but if it's not, it doesn't matter because you're like a 
Laser. It's well, incredible. Well, really coming incredible. Coming from you, that's huge. So I get yes, to, I mean that. It's I get unbelievable. To feel good about myself for an hour. <laughs> 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 no, coming. There's no higher, uh, no higher praise I could get yeah, than a compliment from you. So seriously, um, we all owe you. I mean, we all. But you changed everything for so many of us, and uh, we're. Lucky that you came along. We really are. And that was, you say it's a, a quirk, it's an accident, but you also, um, and, and I do think, I give it up for quirks and accidents, but there's also uh, integrity and hard work and being a good person. And those things aren't quirks. So that makes it all wonderful. So thank you. Thank you very much. Let's thank never, you. Let's never speak again. All right. <laughs> <laughs>